You are listening to Toronto's only pure metal show, The Red Switch. I didn't want anybody, you know, to see. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but anyway, we, I wound up over there and I started jamming with those guys and all of a sudden we became best friends and, you know, the rest is history. Wow. Not that many uh, band stories start off as that. Throw a couple of joints at me and then from there on in we were selling records. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we were young kids. Yeah. You know? It well, wasn't like, we, the, the things that happened later, it was 20 years later, that stuff happened. Yeah. Well, Chris, music has been a major part of your your entire life for a very long, long time. If you weren't or could not play guitar, what would you see yourself realistically doing? Oh, if I didn't play guitar? Yeah. You mean if I never knew what it was like to play guitar? Let's just say in an alternate past, an alternate history, if you were not a guitar player, uh, what would you likely be doing right now? Oh God! I'd probably be just a contractor or something. Yeah, I probably would. I would have started building stuff and then got my license and just then told other people to build it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> my dad. My dad was a master carpenter and and I, I have a you know like I can see right angles well and you know I, yeah. I can build stuff and that's probably what I would have done honestly. Would have been a, a great listener of music though because I always loved music from the day I yeah. was you know remember. You've worked in the business long enough to see the trends in metal come and go. You've seen a lot of bands come in, a lot of bands come out, a lot of bands stick around. What has been the most noticeable swing in the genre you've noticed in the past uh, decade or two? Oh, God. The thing that's so bad about it is that there's still a lot of drugs around. Yeah. And, 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 that, um, and that there's something about that. There's something about music and trying to... Uh, get past, you know, your own obstacles that you think you need, you know, something to get you past it. And, and I, and I think it's just something that may never, ever end, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, I was, I was really saddened to hear about the Slipknot, uh, uh, member that, yeah. that passed away. And, and it just, you know, I was so surprised cause I thought, you know, I thought everybody already figured that out already, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. No. As long as they're there, so that, that's, that's always going to be that I, 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 That's a trend I wish would end. But as far as, like, uh, God, uh, trends in music, um, I actually feel that the kind of music that that that, uh, that Ohm is playing and that um, a lot of bands in L.A. Are, are, are doing, I think instrumental music is, is getting a little bit of, I guess, respect, mm -hmm. you know. And I, and I just, um, I know I'm optimistic, you know, because a lot of people don't think the same way I do. But yeah, I you know I'll, I'll play for ten bucks. I'll play for a thousand bucks. I don't care. And I'll play if there's five people or five thousand people. And I'll play as good both times. So mm -hmm. at least as good as I can at that moment. You know. So for me, it's just something I got to do anyway. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys ever played with the idea of bringing in a permanent vocalist? You know, um, actually, Robert Chino is a great vocalist. Yeah but he's not a lyricist. And I had a great lyricist in Dave Clemens in, in Damn the Machine, mm -hmm. but not the best vocalist. Uh. And I wish I would have, like, known, um, you know, some other, you know, great singer and, and would have been able to, try, you know, kind of approach Clemens and say, hey, why don't you just play rhythm guitar? You write the tunes, the, the melodies and the lyrics and we'll have somebody that can sing it sing it you know it's like yeah but that didn't happen uh but as far as our band goes yeah we're too much wrapped up in what what's going we on right all, now yeah well we were consumed by this kind of music at, you know as young guys so yeah it's like you know it's all about instrumental stuff for us it always has been whether it poured you know when I heard Jeff Beck's uh, The Orange album, it was the two instrumental tracks that were my favorite songs. Oh. And it was just always led me down that road, and I heard Blow by Blow, and then that's it. I never even looked back. You know, I, I joined Megadeth because, you know, Gar joined Megadeth. Yeah. And, and he said, hey, why don't you join this band? They need you. And I said, okay. There, there's a long list of music and albums and compilations behind your name already. Is there anything on deck? for the coming months uh, or year with uh, with Ohm or possibly anything else? Well, actually, I was talking to uh, Robertino today, and I said maybe it's time to make a record, whether that's live 
here in a club in L.A. or, you know, in our studio where we've made, you know, a couple, two or three of our records. So mm-hmm. um, I, I kind of almost want to do a live record at the Big Potato because that's our, those are our, uh, that's where we experiment with music in front of people and we have an audience that, that enjoys us in, in, in this area, at the L.A. area. So, and then Bob Bradshaw does great recordings and he's got, you know, he's got a couple $10,000 stereo mics and, mm-hmm. you know, nice. He, he, when he records, it basically sounds like you're sitting there, and that in itself is pretty amazing. Yeah. And uh, we're all, you know, I almost want to just say, Bob, let's just like, let's do three dates, and we'll just pick the best songs from those shows and and release it. You know? Well, actually, we did um we did the KPFK uh, CD, we did that, and never even thought it was going to come out that well. I mean, we used an FMR little tiny it's called a, a, a super nice compressor mm-hmm. and that, that's all we used in the in the uh the stereo bus to the two track and you know I, when when we heard it back i was like oh my god i think we should release this yeah and it, there were no edits anywhere there was nothing it was just you know here it is wow that's pretty cool so yeah so i think if we have like two or three nights with bob the odds are we could make a really good live record because I think that's what our strength is anyway, is live. Nice. So Possibly going to hear that in the very near future? Um, uh, well, like I said, it depends on whether we decide to do it with Bob Live, Bob Bradshaw, or mm-hmm. if we just decide to, to track it in my studio. Knowing Kofi Baker, he's going to want to do it live because he doesn't like to waste time. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. And, you know, it only takes three hours to make a live record if you do three, you know, three one-hour sets, but uh-huh. it takes three months to do a, a studio record. So Yeah. Well, there's something to be said to, uh, you know, listening to a live album. It's uh, kind of like being there but not being there, and uh, you really get, it's a true testament to a band's skill level if you can actually you know those. I, I'm a total firm believer in that, and yeah. it's like, you know, that's where it's like the tape doesn't lie. Yeah. So As we all know, Wikipedia is the main source for any and all information around the world. Everyone uses right. it, even though it's a it's a crock of shit. And, <laughs> <laughs> but after looking through your Wikipedia page, I noticed that under playing style, it said Chris Poland has severed a tendon on his index finger on his fret hand, which allows him to stretch unusually far with his finger. Is this true? You know what that, oh yeah, I can't. My uh, my pointer finger on my left hand mm. is basically straight. No. Oh. Even when I bend it, it's still straight. So, but it it it, um, it tends to let me do a lot of like really long weird chords without any aggravation. Wow! But I also can't play any great acoustic Led Zeppelin songs because I can't bend my um, my pointer finger, and that bums me out. But oh, have you ever thought about like if I, fixing well, it? Well, no. If I if I if I try, oh, there's no fixing it. Yeah. Yeah. There's no going in there and trying to fix that because they, they told me if I tried to fix it, it might not even move. So. Oh, that's not good. But, you know, I've always tried to play like Black Mountain, and I know what the, all that stuff is, but a lot of times I can't bend that finger to do it in the same position, so I just let it go. Uh, well, you know what? It's, it's got its, I guess it's uh, it's uh, pros and its cons, but I lo- it sounds like to the extent of your career right now, it's served you well so far. Uh, no, I actually want to tell you that, I, I mean, uh, I have a really great friend in Bob Robles. He's a guitar player out here in Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, he's done stuff with Jackson Brown and, and um, Alfonso Johnson and, and all, so many other people. It's like, But anyway, he one day he told me, he goes, you know, I don't think if, if you hadn't cut your hand, you wouldn't play the way you do, and you wouldn't have adapted a style that every time when I hear you play, I know it's you. Yeah. And I was like, wow. I mean, and as far as I was, I was just like, oh, my God, that's the biggest compliment I've ever heard from anybody. Yeah. And and um, my manager was the second guy that told me that. He said, I always know when it's you. That's like, your, like your signature there. Yeah, so it's like, okay, yeah, you can manage me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? Even though this, uh, this is going to air on our station in uh, Toronto here in Canada, uh, we're going to put it on the web there, and we want the whole world to hear it. But uh, any messages here for uh, Canadian fans uh, uh, across our our fair nation here? Any last will and testament? Well, I will tell you that that uh, the the Pag, our bass player, just bought a brand new suburban. Oh yeah. 
so, you know, the other one had 250, 275,000 miles.